is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here talking about scream six in this video here again today so we now have some new details that we need to be discussing as it pertains to the upcoming sixth entry in the scream franchise we'll be going over character names we'll be going over some secret cameo that apparently is out there and we'll be diving into some other new details that viewer non has shared in response to some individuals over on twitter so we know character names for all the cast members now thanks to some trusted folks in the fandom Dermont Moroni is Detective Bailey and viewer Anon revealed several months ago not several but like back in November that Liana Liberato is playing his daughter and her name is Quinn so Detective Bailey is father of Quinn Bailey who Dermont sadly has also already let us in on his reason for wanting to solve this case so I'm just going to put an X next to Quinn's name as a possible suspect given that Dermont has already kind of let the cat out of the bag as to what will happen to her now here's the thing to remember he didn't actually say how or why or what happens to her that causes him to get involved in this case he just said it's strong family ties so we'll see what that means now Jack Champion is playing a character named Ethan Landry, but many of you probably are already used to hearing him be called Ethan if you watch my previous videos. Devin Nakota is playing Anika, and I'm assuming this has to be either a love interest for Chad or Mindy based off of the trailer. The trailer shows Mindy snuggled up I would say not snuggled up, but like a little close with uh, Devin's character of Anika, while Tara actually seems to be the one who's close to Chad. So I'm I think those are those will be the love interest for those two in the movie based off of the trailer. We know that Henry Kazerni is going to be playing Dr. Fur or not Dr. Fur, <laughs> Dr. Christopher Stone. This must be Sam's missing therapist from the trailer. So and I notice his his name seems to be a reference to Stone from Scream 3. Uh, Josh Shigera is playing Danny Brackett. Tony Revolori plays Jason Carvey and of course this must be a Friday the 13th reference since we are in New York last but not least Samara Weaving is playing Laura Laura stuck out to a few people that noticed these names seem to be very scream like in the sense the names call back to other horror franchises like Halloween and Friday the 13th so callbacks to other horror franchises not in the horror franchises very much so a, a scream thing to do but Laura is Sydney's cover name in Scream 3 as well. So this feels like a direct nod to Scream 3. Some other new details that I want to discuss that have been revealed are coming from viewer Non. And I'll say it again. At this point, if you do not want spoilers that are comparable to knowing you need oxygen to live, click away. So Kirby Reed, we know, is returning in the upcoming Scream movie. And that's not the new bit of news I want to talk about. Because we all know this and we're excited for this return. But when can you expect her to arrive? Kirby should arrive apparently early on during the second act. Now, my prediction of how this will play out is she must arrive after the opening scene, the expected Halloween party that must go on during the same night as the opening scene, and Sam and Tara's first chase scene with Ghostface that leads to the bodega attack that should also be taking place at the same night, same night time as the opening scene. And then shortly after this bodega attack, the trailer has me thinking they all go to a precinct and that's where they catch up with Kirby before everyone goes off to this ghost face layer to investigate together. That is where I think they will meet Kirby after all the events that transpire at nighttime on Halloween. When you have the opening attacks, you have a Halloween party, presumably. Then you have Sam and Tara getting chased into a bodega. This is where probably the... Uh, the characters will get to meet Kirby Reed and this is where Kirby will be reintroduced into the narrative for the first time since we last saw her at the end of screen four when she was left left to die. So how much of or actually speaking of this shrine really quick, viewer not is claiming that there are more goodies inside of there. So then the trailer so then the trailer is only showing us half of what we can expect. So what other goodies do you think are lying or waiting for us in this trailer? What other references do you think there could be to other old movies? Uh, what other things do you think could be stored in there that might be related to the current killings? There's so much that could be in this room, apparently. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how much of the Blackmore campus will we actually get to see? So we know that they're in college. We know that the name of the university is Blackmore University. We see Chad rocking a hoodie for it in some of the steals and even in the trailer. So apparently most of what we see is dorms and there will be 
none if not very little footage of the actual classrooms like we saw in scream 2 so it seems as though what they want to do is definitely use new york and the city as more of a backdrop and that's a good thing i never was going into this movie expecting them to use the college as the backdrop because then that would only enhance people comparing this to scream 2 and saying this is nothing but a scream 2 remake um so with new york obviously being the more attractive thing and going off of the trailer they definitely seem to be using the city to their advantage a lot more than the actual college campus and i'm not mad at that it seems as though the motive is not related to stab so no need to worry about anything like screen four or screen five i've seen some people hoping that this series evolves beyond personal ties and others hoping it gets back to the revenge stuff from the original three the most important thing i want to discuss is the fact that the homemade like video shown behind sam when she's holding up a gun in the trailer isn't stab footage either so if it's not stab footage what is it well like i just made mention of it looks very much so like homemade footage um one of you actually shout out to you Jax. you reached out and you expressed that you believe the killers are crime conspiracy theorists who are so convinced that amber and richard were innocent in screen five that they have gone out of their way to make up their own footage to show to show sam exactly how they believe she was able to get away with it and i wouldn't be mad about this motive playing out i would however give a personal connection between sam and the killers that really drives home why they care so much about proving she was the killer in screen five instead of two strangers they know nothing about so do they know something about her that we don't something like something like that for instance i would love to just see a little more of a personal tie to it as for the secret cameo i see everyone talking about it i have a pretty good idea of who it is but we'll see i don't think it's heather langenkamp or anyone i've seen tossed around i also don't think it's next it's this next person i'm about to say but what if it's patrick Dem dempsey for, for some ending sequence to set up the events or the events of seven we go to the kincaid household you're not going to see sydney of course or anything like that but you at least get to see her husband to set up her return to the focus of the narrative or at least establish that they have intent to bring sydney back into the fold for scream seven i know that would be something that would drive many people crazy even if you didn't get to see nev you now got confirmation that she will be very important to the upcoming sequel i think that would be pretty cool lastly mason gooding's manager got to see scream six and they think it is fantastic they shared this over on their instagram page so i think this is pretty cool i'm hearing more and more people have been able to see it they seem to love it they seem to find it to be fantastic like this individual has again this is mason gooding's manager i cannot wait to see what everyone else gets to think about the movie or says about the movie when it releases late not late but early march i'm thinking about when the uh other critics like in la and stuff get to see it late february and what they have to say when the embargo list but you guys can let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and there's a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video.